so in the next few videos we will try to minimize the errors and thereby come up with our theta estimates so let's see how the errors are represented so as already discussed in the previous video the errors are represented by y minus x theta transpose times y minus x theta okay so let's expand this term and see what we're dealing with so if i expand this term i have y transpose y so y transpose y minus minus x theta transpose x theta transpose multiplied by again y minus y multiplied by x theta y transpose x theta so y transpose x theta plus x theta transpose x theta so this will be our expanded representation of the same thing all right now let's try to study these two terms <clears throat> they both have the same terms they have y they have x they have theta y x x theta and now let's try and understand whether these terms are actually different or the same all right so let's try to understand them by understanding their dimensions so x will be an m by n matrix an m by n matrix where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns again if i go back to house prices so i have area and I have price. Okay, so 2100, 100, 1000, 80. So X is supposed to have two rows and two columns because of the bunch of ones we introduce. Right? Y will have two rows and only one column. So the dimensions for Y will be two rows that is m rows it's a generalized representation plus one column now theta on the other hand for only one independent variable area we have theta zero which is a constant and a theta one all right so those will be equal to the number of columns that i have in this data if i introduce once all right so this will be an n cross one vector y is of course again a vector so now if we multiply x and theta what will we get we are multiplying a matrix which is m by n x this is the dimensions for x and theta will be n cross 1 now if we multiply these two matrices these have to be similar and the resultant matrix will be m cross 1 Okay, m cross 1. Now, if I multiply the transpose of this, which is 1 cross m with y, with y, which is nothing but m cross 1, then I will be left with a 1 cross 1 matrix for this quantity, for this whole quantity. Now a 1 cross 1 matrix is actually a scalar and it turns out that if I do the same thing for this quantity, this will also turn out to be a scalar. So for two quantities that have the same terms and they turn out to be scalars, only magnitude matters so they don't have any dimensions so I can easily replace them to be representative of the same term 